Welcome back everyone. In the last episode on the Festo CMMT ST drive, we've connected to the drive, set the parameters and we're able to control the drive from Festo Automation Suite. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect this drive to a Allen Bradley Compact Logix PLC and we're going to be setting up the EDS file as well as the AOI. Now these are extremely important steps when working with any third party supplied hardware and therefore I believe that it's very important to see the process in action what it's going to take to download the files what it's going to take to install the files and then to be able to connect to this drive and then get the AOI into Studio 5000 from Rockwell Automation in order to be able to control your drive from standard PLC programming as we had seen with ladder logic structured text or any other language just as we had seen last time our first step is going to be download the necessary files and once on Google, we can type in Festo support portal. And by going into the support portal provided in the first or second link, it only changes the language. So let's click on the English one. Accept all cookies. And here we're going to search CMMT SD, the drive that we have uh, on hand. And that's going to be the EP version. So make sure to select the right one for you. We're going to once again, scroll down and look for the software. So if I click on software, we're going to find a few additional files that we didn't look at last time. So the first file that we're going to need is the EDS file. So I'm going to press on download and save the latest file in my downloads folder. So that's going to be the EDS file. And the second one, we're going to look at function blocks for Rockwell. So we're not going to use a function block per se, but this is what is going to contain the AOI for the implementation in Studio 5000. So I'm going to press on download here as well and save that file or the zipped folder that's going to contain several files. Let's transfer them to the VM and see what we've got. So we've downloaded two folders. As I've said, the first one is the EDS file. I can right click extract all paste that on the desktop of the virtual machine. And I'm also going to extract the other folder. So I'm going to right click, extract all, save it on the desktop. And so the first file, as I keep mentioning it, it is the EDS file for the CMMT ST drive. The way we install this is we're going to type in the search EDS and what's going to pop up in a first or second uh, result is going to be the EDS hardware installation tool. We're going to select that. And this is what allows Studio 5000 or Ars Logix 5000 to recognize the different devices that have not been preloaded into the software configuration. So we're going to add a new file. Here we're going to browse for a single file. I'm going to go to the same directory where I've establish this file, select the EDS file, click on next. Once again, next. And this should hopefully you have successfully completed the EDS wizard, which means that the file has installed as expected, we're going to press on finish and exit the software. The next step, so let's quickly look at the other folder that we've extracted. If I double click the folder, You'll notice that there's going to be documentation, AOIs, and example. So in the documentation, you're going to find a lot of the manuals that are going to be useful in your implementation and that are specific to Alan Bradley uh, or Rockwell. You're also going to find the AOI. So the AOI that we're going to install is going to be the uh, drives Festo EIP. Dot L5X file. We're going to look at that in just a second. And last but not least, we've got a few examples. So if you're interested in how Festo has implemented some of this logic, you can certainly open one of the files in Studio 5000 or RS Logix 5000, depending on the version, and look at their implementation of the logic. All right, so here we are connected to the Compact Logics PLC with Studio 5000 open. Just as a quick reminder, this is version 30.11 on the firmware and software side. In order to set up the AOI or the add-on instruction, we need to scroll down in the controller organizer tree and we will need to add the instructions. So add-on instructions, right click, import add-on instruction. 
and here we can go to the desktop where we've extracted the folder select the appropriate folder uh, go all the way down to AOIs and here as I had mentioned we're going to do the PTP drives festo EIP dot L5X the AOI is going to import and perhaps give us a couple of warnings before we can use it let's see what comes up next it looks like everything is fine we can press on OK we can view the logic of the AOI and the implementation that has been provided by the manufacturer. This is not something that I would recommend that you edit or make changes to. That being said, if you want to dive in and understand how they're passing data from the servo drive to the uh, controller, this is where you're going to find this information. Our next step is going to be adding the module to the Ethernet configuration of the PLC. I went offline for this operation. I'm going to right click on Ethernet, new module. And this is where the EDS files come in. So here I can search for Festo. And you'll notice that the catalog number for CMMT-ST is going to be available. So I'm going to create that. We could also create a generic module. So that's something that we're going to look at in a different series, but we can certainly go that route as well. So this is going to be CMMT1. This drive is on the private network as we had configured last time, 192.168.1.60060. Here I'm going to change from compatible module to disable keying. That should be fine. Press OK and the module will be created in the IO tree. So let's go online and see if we can download the program to the processor and be able to see that drive. It's going to throw an error because the program has been changed. So we do need to perform a download. Press on download, press OK. Once we are back online with the PLC, we can notice that the CMMT SD CMMT1 device is connected. We can double click the device to view the parameters, but more importantly, we can see that the status is currently running, which means that the PLC is connected and is talking to the drive as we would expect. Now, of course, there's going to be the standard parameters that we can use here, but what's more interesting to us is that we can now utilize the AOI in conjunction with the data that's coming from this drive into our logic. So let's close the parameters, go into a routine. I'm going to open this main, and here I can add a new ladder logic rung and create an instruction of type that we've configured. So if I scroll down, you'll notice once again, PDP underscore drives. So I can just pull up any XIC, and then instead of XIC, I'm going to type in here PTP underscore uh, drives. Of course, this autofill, so I can just click and allow the software to configure it. Now, we're going to need to create a couple of things. So, the first is going to be the instance of that specific instruction. So, this is going to be cmmt underscore st1. We're going to right click this and new cmmt st1. This is going to be of data type PTP drives festo EIP. We're going to make that controller scoped right here, PLC box, create. And we're going to have to specify a couple of data parameters. So drive status, drive control. And this is going to be important because it's going to dictate what is being passed to this instruction and what we're expected to get out of the instruction. Now, the required parameters inside the AOI that we absolutely must specify in addition to the ones that are currently set to 0, 100, 15, 3000, and so on, are going to be marked by question marks. So those are the ones that we absolutely must specify in order for the AOI to work. Now, I encourage you to look at the Festo documentation that we had downloaded alongside with this AOI. That being said, the three parameters that we're going to enter are going to be so first we're going to get the input data. So CMMT underscore ST1. And here we're going to find CMMT ST1 and we need to scroll down until we find the data. So let's just scroll down. There's going to be many parameters that come in, 
but we are looking for let's see here data so that should be good and then the other one is going to be cmmt underscore st1 and this is going to be the output so one is going to be the input so the status of the drive and the other one is a way to control the drive so like so and then we also have the connection faulted here so connection faulted is going to be cmmt underscore st1 and that's going to be in here let's see connection faulted press enter now i ran into a small issue with the instruction i believe that festo has re released a newer version of this instruction that being said the problem was that the data type of the instruction does not match what we're getting from the drive. So if we look at what we're getting from the drive, I'm just going to right click and then monitor. And what we've got here, if I just zoom out and look at this top level data, it's of type short integer 24. So 24 short integers. Now, when we go back to the instruction that we've got, it is expecting drive underscore status. And here, if I scroll down into my AOI and look at the parameters and local tags, you'll notice that the drive control and status, so these two tabs, are looking for integer of size 12. Now, all that really is happening is that you're transforming 24 short integers into 12 integers so essentially the int is twice as big as a short int and if we go back that is exactly what i've done with the copy instructions so we've got the data coming in from the drive being copied into this new array of size 12 of integers and similarly on the output side an array of 12 integers and that's being used inside of the instruction so everything is compiling as expected and at this point we're obviously getting some errors and we can start looking at the festo automation suite and then releasing power stage releasing plug-in control and then going back and then acknowledging the errors so we're going to create a little bit of logic in the next video that being said we are connected we are able to utilize the aoi and I will see you all next time.